I turn right behind me, all I see is pitch blackness. Is anybody down here? Can you help us? We're locked in. You heard that too. I hate being in here. I thought I saw a face right there. Shut up. God. What was that? My name is R.C. Davis. Ever since I was a kid, I've had strange experiences that cannot be explained. Frustrated with not finding answers in books, the internet, and television, I decided to buy my own equipment to conduct my own investigations to find the answers that have eluded me all these years. I will travel to the most alleged haunted locations as well as other unknown places for paranormal activity and to see what exactly is going on there. This is DPI. We're at the Randolph County Asylum in Winchester, Indiana. We have come here to investigate the numerous claims of paranormal activity. Because I absolutely know for a fact that place is haunted. The energy in the building itself is massive. This asylum housed many of society's sick and neglected. In the mid to late 1800s, the poor, disabled, and others who couldn't take care of themselves came here. Many of the residents that lived here also worked and died here. And with around 200 deaths, some of them may have never left. In 1851, Randolph County in Indiana purchased land to build a poor farm for the indigent people that were unable to make it on their own. After the first one burnt to the ground and the second demolished, the asylum that stands today was constructed in 1899 built over the partial foundation from the original. This is the outside foundation of the, the original, original over asylum built in 1851. Wow. Yes. That's so cool. The residents in the second building simply packed up their belongings, came over here, found a room, and settled in. Many residents had no other choice but to live here. Up until your family couldn't take care of you anymore, they'd drop you off here because they knew that you would be housed, you'd be clothed, and you'd be fed. Poor people would call this place home, and drifters and things like that, carnies. This was 1800s equivalents of welfare, is exactly what this was. The sick and injured received minimal help. There were never any doctors here, and this place was never a hospital, okay? Really? The clip. The closest doctors were in Winchester. So they, would they, they would come here? And if we had a resident that was sick, they were placed in a medical room. And this is quarantine. So when you were in quarantine, you had one of two things happen. Either you got better and you left, or you died and you left. Maybe the doctor would visit once a month, maybe two times a month, uh, yes. Families would live in these small cell-like rooms. The families would come here, and on originally it wasn't segregated by any anything. Like there was no women's side, men's side. Families lived together. But by 1918, we had segregated by gender, not by race. The separation of men and women came to light after a resident named Lulu was tragically assaulted. This room belonged to Lulu Woods. Lulu Woods was brought here when she was about 14 years old. Her and her stepfather came here after her mother passed away. A couple months after they got here, Lulu became pregnant. And her stepfather was arrested for molesting oh. Lulu. Got her pregnant. She gave birth to the baby. Um, and then a couple of years went by and she was raped again. Got pregnant again, um, gave birth again. After she got here and everything happened, they ended up segregating by gender. Um, Lulu left a couple times but always came back. Um, she had a lot of mental trauma and a lot of emotional issues that she was dealing with. And uh, people called her crazy. 
but she wasn't crazy. She was perfectly sane. She was just very depressed and very confused and didn't understand why her life had taken the turn that it had taken. Lulu wasn't crazy, but there were some that were questionable. If you had a violent disorder like bipolar disease or bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, anything that caused you to be extremely violent, mm -hmm. we couldn't have you here because we didn't have the resources to take care of you. But there were occasions where we did have people that stopped here as a kind of shelter, okay, until people from Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, the surrounding areas that had a state hospital could come and pick them up. Now, this is the room that they would be kept in. Now, there were instances where we had more than one person with the similar issues here at the same time. Would you want them in the same room together? Oh, no, right. no. So, go. this is the other place. If we had more than one person, the second person would be shackled to the wall like that, kept away from the other person. Yes, yes. In the laundry room, there was a man who liked getting attention by causing physical harm to himself. He hit himself in the head with a fucking axe. With an axe? With a fucking axe. With the blade? With the blade. And had the axe, the blade, stuck in his head. They called the doctor out here. The doctor comes out here and fixes him up. And then he continued to do shit like that. And it got to the point where the residents the superintendent, even the fucking doctor, would just come out here, pour some shit on it, clean him up, and send him on his way. That to me would be bounds for state hospital. Yeah, this is Walter's workshop. Walter Ryan Armstrong was a resident here at the asylum. And when Walter was here, he preferred to be by himself. Didn't really like a lot of interaction with people. Things kind of set him off. And if he were to be alive today, he would be considered on the spectrum. He had a lot of quirks, a lot of tics. And one of his quirks, one of his tics, if you look down here at the bench, look on the wall, that's all his handiwork. He would hammer and pull out and hammer and pull out and hammer on the workbench and pull out of the workbench. Like this, all this shit is his. All of it. I and mean, you can even see right there, yeah. all right there, like everywhere. Now, he is caught on SLS. We've seen him hammering, like standing right here, hammering. And we have him on EVP asking for a hammer. So that's the next thing that we're going to get is a hammer. Another resident that reveals herself and had a mental breakdown was Ida Gunkel. Ida was admitted here in 1936 and she died September of 1938. Ida's husband was a very friendly traveling salesman. Uh -oh. Ida's husband liked the ladies, and the ladies liked him. So much that he contracted neurosyphilis. And syphilis itself, if not treated, will cause severe brain damage and death. Ida's husband passed, leaving Ida still alive with the neurosyphilis. And her children took care of her to the best of their ability until they couldn't do it anymore. So in 1936, they dropped her off here. She ended up losing a lot of her mental faculties, so much so that she would leave her room, come out in the hallway, wailing, screaming, blood curdling screams, pulling up her hair, scratching herself, going to the bathroom in random places and rolling around in it. She was found wandering the yards of the 350-acre work farm. They decided that the best course of action was to place her in a room downstairs in the basement 
the only room that has bars on the windows. One night in September, Mrs. Thornburg, the superintendent's wife, was going to lock her in for the night and Ida asked for a broom. Mrs. Thornburg gave her the broom, shut the door, locked it, came upstairs, went to bed. Didn't think anything of it. Well, in the middle of the night, Ida tore the material from around her mattress, took half of it and tied it to the broom handle. Threw the broom handle up over the pipes and tied the other part around her neck. The next morning, she was found with her feet flat on the floor, leaning at a 45 degree angle. Her death certificate says that she died of strangulation, not of a broken neck. So she leaned into that for quite some time and ended up taking her own life. Now, when we go down there, like after I leave and you guys investigate and do what you guys do, be mindful. Don't poke the bear because she absolutely hates Ted. When you come back and you're out at the infirmary, I'll flat guarantee you, you'll find something out there. The infirmary is my specialty. Oh yeah? Because when Ted first started doing stuff out here, he would tell her story in her room. And we had a medium out here and the medium said that Ida does not want her death talked about in her room because she is not, I mean, she's, she's dead. But she relives it every time somebody says anything about it, asks her any questions about it, or even talks about it in her room, she ends up going over it again and again and again. And she's stated that she wants Ted dead. Oh, wow. Because I absolutely know for a fact that place is haunted. And I know, I know several of the spirits that are there. And I've got a deal worked out with them. You don't jack with me, and I won't jack with you. Right. And they don't jack with me. They have before, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, what the cage is. Oh, yeah, that's been there. So this is where she died? Mm-hmm. Wow. There were other spirits that haunt the asylum. Doris Addington. She was the cook here for about 70 years. Like, not only did she work in the kitchen, but we had so many other people working in the kitchen with her. So, you will get EVPs from Doris. Now, Doris, or Doris did eventually pass away here in the asylum, but it wasn't downstairs in the kitchen. Um, when Doris would help the community, because she was known for helping churches and things like that, and they had community dinners and, and stuff, because she had experience doing large batch cooking, okay? And at that time, churches weren't really sure what route to take and, and stuff, so Doris would go and help them, but she would never accept payment. Her payment came in the form of a doll. This is Doris's room. The dolls on the bottom shelf here belonged to Doris. The other ones have been left here by repeat offenders, people that have been here multiple times, mm -hmm. and Dan and Rich, when they go to estate sales, garage sales, whatever, they bring back dolls. This room belonged to Noah. Noah was eight years old when he passed away of the measles. He was here with his mother. These toys in here are because Noah loves fucking toys. Yeah. He loves toys that light up, toys that make noise. He loves it when people read to him, leave him pictures, write him notes. He is one of the most active spirits here. Noah isn't the only child spirit here. The kids that lived here like us to read to them in this room. So we'll sit here Do and- Do you have kids in here? We have kids all over throughout the place. Yeah, up in the attic, they like to play hide and seek. They'll literally knock on the wooden pillars. There's the jail cell that he had placed 
in here. And the door actually shuts. Don't use the toilet, obviously. <laughs> it shuts, it doesn't lock though, so you're safe. But we get a lot of EVPs in there. This is our mirror room. Okay. The way that we have it set up, it's a mini vortex. Portals, two mirrors together create a portal. What we've got right now is a whole shit ton. And there's a lot of energy that radiates off of it. This is a Ouija board times a million. So. A lot of activity in here. You just have to be careful. That's the only, like, if you don't know how to scry, then don't do it. You can come down here and get EVPs and do SLS and shit like that and do Estes and all that. Just playing with mirrors. Please be <laughs> We find out that human spirits aren't the only activity here. Now, there is one thing in here that is attached to Ted. And that is our resident creeper. It is a black octopus looking thing with tentacles and feet on the end of its tentacles. <laughs> what it does is it will run diagonal, it will run across the ceiling, it will run all the way around the walls. It's not good, it's not bad. It's a mass of energy and it's connected to Ted because it didn't show up until he got here. Oh. All the energy and activity here could be caused by all the deaths. There was a guy named Willis Cowden. He threw himself out. He threw himself. So, Willis. You see that hay now window right there? That big white barn? Willis Cowden threw himself out of that window right there. So, what he did was he set up a wagon right there on the outside, right below that hay mow window. And he got out and he ran all the way up to the hay mow. And he would throw hay bales out of the window. Yes. His hands must have been really tired because you do not bale hay with gloves on. He's got these gloves on and he goes to pick up this bale of hay and he goes to throw it out the window and that glove gets stuck. Oh, man. And not only does the hay bale go, but he goes right oh, along man. with it and falls right down on the fucking wagon. Oh. And he dies right there. He didn't die at Randolph County Hospital. John Oliver Champ. I went out the second story window. So I was just wondering if, if there was any... So this one ramp? says This one says he fell. You guys say he was pushed. He was. He was pushed out. Okay. That the, the ramp that we came up, that we were just standing on, uh -huh. if you look up, his window is right oh, there. Oh, so that was right there. Yes. Oh, he, second, there. second floor, yes, yes. And it was all because he was standing up for the people here. He was like 86 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was, it was in September when he passed, right? 1943? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was right around the time that we had four guys here that were alcoholics. Um, they tried to join the army um, and join up for World War II. They got rejected. So those four guys came back to Randolph County and they're like, we're going to the asylum and we're gonna run the place. And they did for a little bit. They beat people up, they stole from people, they raped people like, there's some pretty gnarly things that happened while they were here and John Oliver Champ, everybody else was terrified of these people, would not speak out against them, nothing. So John Oliver Champ confronted that group of men and told them, hey, when I get some concrete evidence, like concrete facts, that you're doing what you are doing, it's over for you. Well, John Oliver Champ's in his room washing his window He's 86 years old, okay, and he's like six foot two. So he's leaning and cleaning the inside of his window, lifts the window up, sits down on the windowsill, closes the window, and proceeds to wash the outside of the window. Goes all the way down, and as soon as he's done 
lifts the window up and is going to get up. And two of those four men shove him the fuck out that window. I found so many documented deaths that I couldn't list them all here. And if you died here and you had no family on the outside, the county, the government was responsible for burying you. And if the county was responsible for burying you, you're not going to be involved. You're going to be placed in a pine box and you're going to be buried in an unmarked grave. That area directly behind that little garage is our potter's field. All of your marked graves in there? The unmarked graves. We've got 51, 53 bodies buried out there. I thought it was further back. Nope. And one mummy. Yeah. I heard you heard about the mummy. Okay. But I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> that one mummy. Yes, I said it. Yeah, that one was deployed on mummy. They took him from. I know it's already composing. They know. Here. That wasn't the only place they put bodies. This is the meat room. Now, at the time that this was used as a meat room, we had a dirt floor, okay? In the 1920s, 1930s, there was an extreme outbreak of cholera. County undertakers and the morticians couldn't keep up with the body count. So they came to the county commissioners and asked if they could use the meat room because it's in the basement, it's cool, there's a dirt floor. They With could the use it. They, eat. they could use it as a makeshift morgue. Oh no. The county commissioners said, yeah. What? So what they did was they placed a embalming table right here in the middle of the floor. This is not the embalming table. But they placed an embalming table right here in the middle of the floor. They placed your body on top of said embalming table proceeded to embalm you, allowing your bodily fluids and all the nasty bacteria and contaminants to fall into the dirt floor. When they were done with your body, they placed your body in the freezer with the pork chops on the other oh, side. Oh. Now, the entire time that this place was used as a makeshift morgue, the bodies were stacked to about here. Wow. The entire time. In the room? Yes. Now, at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s, we're coming out of the Victorian period where people are terrified of being buried alive. At that point in time, there are so many diseases that mimicked death. So if that happened, they would place you in a pine box. They would put a table right there where that Singer sewing machine is, and they'd get a volunteer resident to come and sit with you overnight to make sure that you didn't wake up and tonight we're going to hang out with the spirits until morning and see if they wake up we set up our eight stack cams in the following locations noah's room the deceased eight-year-old still likes to play with toys that light up and make sound so i thought this would be the perfect place for our scare bear which i put on the windowsill First floor hallway, women's side. This camera is right outside of Noah's room. We place the cat ball on the chair on the left. Basement hallway, outside of Ida's room. I put an infrared floodlight in this hall too. All the light is invisible to our eyes as you can see. I have a flashlight because you can't see two inches in front of you. Men's cafeteria. This is where the creepy octopus has been seen climbing the walls and ceiling. We also put a cat ball on the counter. The meat room slash morgue. This is where dead bodies were embalmed and stored along with the food. We put the cat ball on the table. Our last three cameras are in the attic where it's claimed little kids like to play. This is the main room with our cat ball on the table in the back. The light you see here is the infrared light coming from the asylum security camera. And the light in this corner is coming from our stat cam covering the sitting area with a cat ball on the chair. And finally, the attic east room. I place a cat ball in the back on the floor. And less than five minutes after we leave this area, there are bugs and dust flying around. But this one caught my eye. As you can see, it's pulsating as it moves up.
then stops and moves back down. Then, while still pulsating, it stops and hovers before accelerating up and out of the screen. First thing we're going to do is uh, Jeff's going to hold the SLS and he's going to walk with the SLS. And we're going to start up from the top in the attic where they say they captured some, captured a, what was it, a judge? Yeah. Captured a judge on the SLS camera. Are there any little kids in here? We heard in this place, in the attic, they like to play hide and seek. We have kids all over throughout the place, yeah. Up in the attic, they like to play hide and seek. And Judge, are you in here? I'd like for you to show yourself to us, if you could. Heard you did that with Ted. That and uh, the little kids, if you're in here with us, just make yourself know we have the SLS too, so we'll be able to see you. A retired judge took residence here and used to hold trials up in this attic. Go lay up against that brick wall over there. What? Because that's where Ted was like. Oh. I now walk over to the wall the where it said place. Ted was touched by the judge. Hey judge, can you come and uh, tap me on the shoulder? And you put your hand on my shoulder like you did Ted? You're mapping me out? Can you move that balloon? Push that little kid on the tricycle? And right now I'm running my EMF detector. I'm running both of them as a matter of fact. This one right here. I'm getting no readings on this detector. Can you come and touch his shoulder, Mr. Judge? Can you strike the gavel down? I can't even see like right on the side of me here. I can probably see about as far as my wrist down that way. We now head over to the sitting area. Cat balls in the tools. We'll sit over here. If you're here with us, can you sit in one of the two chairs in front of me? I'm gonna run my I'm gonna run my digital recorder right now. This is the Randolph County Asylum. We're in the attic. Is there anybody wants to talk? I got this digital recorder here. You can yell, scream. 
will be able to hear you. Is that you? Are you over there? This knock sounds like it came from the main room. Up in the attic, they like to play hide and seek. They'll literally knock on the wooden pillars up there. To be a quick burst session, I'm going to play it back real quick. See if I captured any voices on here. This is the Randolph County Asylum. We're in the attic. Is that you? Are you over there? Turn right behind me, all I see is pitch blackness. At this time, Jeff captures a figure behind me climbing on the beams. Then another one to my left. There was one above your head. Behind me? Are you up here? Like sitting, like climbing the beam? Yeah, on the beam. Uh, just hanging there? That's how the other one was. Two of them? So how'd you play hide and seek? Hide up in the beams? Just checking this out. You want to walk? Let's go to the other side. As we are leaving the attic, the stat cam on the first floor captures this amazing voice. What makes this voice amazing? is because it's right outside of Noah's room. Was this Noah calling for his mother? I'm surprised this voice wasn't captured in Noah's room. So long, you come to this. Is there anybody in here? Any cells? Cells. <laughs> well, we did two gels in a row, so it's kind of on my mind. Oh, well, we did a Clay County and Mountainsville at the same time. So that's the octopus room? No, that's oh. downstairs. Oh, yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, that's the I'm not. It looks like it goes to the Until I get older, I don't even know who you are. What are you doing? You got something? Huh? 
Ini dia semua. All right, moving on. Let's move over to the lady side. Do you want to look into the doll room? Yeah, go ahead. Not you. Me? Yeah, I said you want to look in the doll room. Oh, you're the one with the SLS. I don't have my glasses on. The man on. The <laughs> man on. It's weird, it doesn't even map out the dolls. Is there anybody in there? Oh, never mind, it does. It does? Yeah, it maps out the dolls. Holy crap! No, that's got a body shape to it. <laughs> that makes it even more creepy. Oh, it starts moving. Can you wave your hand? <laughs> we head back to base, and 12 minutes later, the stat cam in Noah's room captures this sound. This sound wasn't captured on the camera right outside of Noah's room, so the sound must have come from this room or right outside the window. Alright, so right now we're going to head to the basement. Is anybody down here? I'm here to communicate with you. <laughs> it got so cold down here now. Oh. Ida Gunkel strangled herself in this room. Oh, Ida, you in here? Turn on the bottom Coming in, hope you don't mind. Just here to visit with you. I'm gonna go ahead and run a spirit box. If you wanna talk, you can talk to us through this device. So it's the screen light. Can light up this K2 meter. I know there's one right here on your bed. But if you uh, get close to the screen light, it'll let us know that you're here. 
I'll set it right here. Are you here with us? If you just get close to this green light, it'll light up more. Yeah, you think by all the people that come through here that they, they would know how to work these uh, devices now, you know? They know how to manipulate them. We're not here to harm you or anything like that. We just want to communicate, see if you're still here with us. If you don't want us in here, you can uh, light this up or tell us in this S box, spirit box, you can talk through this and tell us to get out. say a creeper is it is a black octopus looking thing with tentacles and feet on the end of its tentacles <laughs> is there a creeper in this room can you show yourself That's fine. This white noise. I wonder if this has anything to do with Ida. Ida Gunkel. Are you reading my shirt? You see how it's a paranormal on my shirt? Please, can you come squeeze me? Are you here right now? Are you reading my shirt? You know, <laughs> are you manipulating his uh, obulus? Are you speaking to me in the spear box? Are you showing yourself on the wall? We now go into Noah's room. Noah's room, um, June 5th at the Randolph Asylum. It is 12.10. Noah, if you're in here, we brought you a gift. Well, actually, we're taking it back with us because he's kind of mine. You can borrow him. He's that little bear in the middle of your window. He's a stuffed teddy bear. But it, he's got a device in there that if you go up and touch him on the head, he'll light up. But I'll give you an example. You can just do this. And he'll light up. 
Do you like that? Can you do that? Can you touch him on the head? Now well, let's know that you're here and you want to play with us, we can play with your toys. If you light them up, we can read you a story. We heard you love those. Can you move one of these toys for us? We'll play with you if you like. You know, I was once a kid too. I would love to play with my toys. You got a lot of them. What's your favorite one? Can you pick them out? Move it? They're like our toy, our teddy bear. You can play with them. We'll give you permission to. Go and uh, touch him on the head. Touch me on the head. can pick any one of these toys. You can move it across the room. Can you move any of these balls that are right in front of me? You push it over to me and I'll, I'll push it back to you after I freak the freak out. <laughs> Push one of those balls to me. Can you pick it up and put it in my hand? How old are you? Do you have a lot of friends? I also have this little green light that's already lit up. If you come over here next to it, it could light it up even more. You probably don't even have to touch it. Can you walk right by me in front of me? You'll see this light up to more green lights. Can you do that for me? After 30 minutes of recording on three different cameras using three EMF detectors, two digital recorders, the Ovulus, Spirit Box, Scare Bear, and a Cat Ball, we didn't get any activity. You don't want to play with us or talk to us or anything? That's fine. We'll be heading out then. I'm going to leave you this ball and I'll leave you the teddy bear for now, but when we go, we're going to take it back with us. So if you want to play with it, then you're going to have to do it tonight. Where do we want to go next? In the attic. She just said, like, you knock on the thing three times. And you sit in the, that circle. And then you move around until you hear a knock again. Bye bye now. We'll be back. We'll be back to you. If you'd like to, you can follow us up to the attic. Well, you can follow us play. We're going to go 
play hide and seek if you want to come. If you want to come, you can light up that ball. Or the teddy bear I put up in the window. Alright. I'm going to knock three times. And we're just going to sit down and wait for your, your knocks. So we move when we hear a knock. And we move around and then they heard the knock. Well, I thought you said that if we knock and then we move around. If they knock back, then we... No. We move around in a circle. Can we just keep walking around in a circle? I think so. Around and around. Counter cloth knives. There's the wheelchair. <laughs> At least you it is it. We need some music. How close are you? I'm not gonna run you over. Though. What if they never knock? I'm gonna be walking around and get dizzy. Keep I'm gonna keep walking till you knock. Light this ball up over here. Oh my god, man. I can't do this. Just walk slowly. I'm 18 like you. Just walk slowly. Take long strides. Okay, I'm just share that. My strides are not as long as yours. Take wide strides. I'm sorry, I feel like a fool. Who is good? I can sit down. Alright. What? What about a stomp? Can you stomp back? Mr. Judge, can you sit down in the chair that to the left of my dad? It's the wheelchair. No. The left of me? No, the left. Like, I'm looking at you. So, it would be your left, not my left. My left. He wants you to sit. He wants you to sit in the wheelchair. No, I don't. I want you to... I want him to sit in that one so that he lights up the ball. Stupid. That's the way you said it to the left of my dad. Not getting any company, we went back to Nerve Center and the stack cam in the basement captured this female voice. Then, nine minutes later, we capture this loud bang in the attic. Can you strike the gavel down? After getting no activity in Lulu's room, we make our way on the second floor to the jail cell where unruly people at the asylum were detained for any length of time. Is there anybody here in the cell with us? Did 
to do something to uh, Is that you banging out there? Can you bang in here? <laughs> oh, my Can you help us? We're locked in. Can you let us out? Did you close the door? Help. Somebody help us, we're locked in here. Really appreciate it if you come let us out. Can you open that door for us? Is there somebody here in the cell with us? Can you not let us out because you're trapped in here with us too? Not getting any responses, we head to John Oliver Chant's room where he was pushed out this window to his death. And two of those four men shoved him the fuck out that window. Most likely he fell on his head because he was like this. And then the window went backwards. Two men came through this door. And just pushed him over. Mr. Champ, are you in here? Can I call you John? Can you talk to us? Did you get thrown out that window? Or did you just fall out? Where are you? You're the one who would go. Not getting an eyewitness account, we head next door to the judge's room. Judge, are you there? Right then, our cameras capture what sounds like a scream or a shriek. Could this be Ida roaming the halls? She would leave her room, come out in the hallway, wailing, screaming, blood-curdling screams. Hey, you just get the room. You heard that too? What? Another side? No. So now we're in a butcher slash morgue, slash morgue uh, room. Well, this is where she says that they uh, chopped the meat up over here. Wanna On the butcher block. Chop the meat up right there and then throw it in that cooler. And they also had dead bodies put on that about right there. Or they would embalm them 
and let the blood seep down into the soil. And then they would move the bodies into that corner with the food. <laughs> Which is just... Oh man, that's disgusting. Is there anybody in here? Were you one of the bodies that were involved in this room? We stay in this room for another 20 minutes, but didn't get any activity. At 2.50 a.m., the cat ball in the attic lights up. The flashing light on the right is the dying IR light from the other stat cam in the sitting area. These cat balls are not motion sensors, so this flashing light did not set it off, as you can see earlier in this room just minutes before. Could this be the children playing with the cat ball? Right now we're going to go to the two chapels on the men's side and the woman's side. I'm going to go to the men's side. Jump go to the woman's side. Dead silence time is where we each go to a separate location and sit in silence letting the building talk to us. I'm in the men's chapel side trying to capture EVPs or electronic voice phenomena. Yeah, we're just gonna sit in silence. See if we hear any. Let the building talk to us. Find a good spot to sit in. If there's anyone in here, please make yourself known by talking into this microphone on the floor. If there's anyone here, talk or forever hold your peace. Let's set me visual recording right here. Set it down right there. Not getting anything definitive, we head to Walter's. Walter was the man who compulsively hammered and screwed into the wood in this workshop. Right there, God. Oh yeah, a bunch of times. I'm gonna set the digital recorder right here by it. Do you need something? Something like a, a hammer? Do you need a hammer? Do you need some nails? I think you might have used them all. After being in this room for 20 minutes, we didn't make contact with Walter, so we head to the mirror room. Yeah. 
Are there chairs in here? Yeah. Yes. Good. I hate being in here. Flex right off of this. I'll run digital recorder. Good way. EMF detector, see if there's any kind of power out here. Mirror room, it's 4.16 a.m. June 6th, Randolph County Asylum. You can ask the questions, I hate being here. So I heard this was a uh, kind of a place, like a vortex of energy, good and bad here uh, good or bad and it creates a portal here. If there's any spirits here we ask that you come through that portal. And, uh, whoa. Stop. We hope that it is good, positive energy that you bring into this room. I thought I saw a face right there. Shut up. It's just the bricks. There's nothing over there. Are there any spirits here with us right now? Can you make yourself known? Can you tap on one of these mirrors? Can you tap on one of us? My name's RC. This is my son Jeff over here in the chair. Hey. EMF detectors reading a flat zero of at least in the chair. I'm gonna take it and Absolutely no energy at all in this room. Whoa, there's a. It's gonna go off. Those are the bolts from the, the light up here. You see, that's what making that go off. It's the only energy I see in here, the only uh, power. But when you bring it into the center of the room, it's all zeros. Zero volts, zero logos. And that sums it up as we got no activity. Earlier, we were in the kitchen and captured this evidence. Okay, this was Doris' room, right?
Hello, Doris. Are you here with us? You have to put your dog ears on to hear it. Hello, Doris. Are you here with us? Unfortunately, we didn't hear it and left the room. There's a step there. Oh, you trip final? <laughs> Good. <laughs> you put that there. <laughs> hey, dude, you kicked it out of the way. Right in the way where I would fall. Shut the door. <laughs> See, you set traps. He sets traps for me to make me fall. No, I don't. I don't. Really He's bad. lying. Now we're walking to the barn where the guy threw himself out the window. Right? Well, not on purpose. No, no, not on purpose. The wood got caught and he fell and fell into the wagon from all the way. Up there. I wish we were coming here in daylight. Oh, we can't really do anything in here. Can't even see where he uh, climbed. She said there was a ladder that went up there. Yeah, but we can't really go up there. I can't even see where there's an opening. Yeah, we can't really do anything in here. Oh, that sucks. Oh well. Another dead end. Right up there. That high up. Oh, that way. Oh, All the way down here. We head back to base and leaving the cameras rolling in the asylum, but we didn't capture any other further activity. The Randolph County Poor Farm Infirmary Asylum gave unfortunate souls a chance at recovery from the difficult life they had. Lives began here and ended here. The ones that are still hanging around speak out. <laughs> while others show a different approach to get our attention. That despite their challenging way of life, they are still able to make their presence known to a society that turned a blind eye toward them 